like for me, um, I was one of those people once upon a time that hated that, oh, just write advice because it's like, I need stuff. I can't just start writing. But now I don't mind it because I guess of how I interpret just write because for one, if the person is asking for advice, then they need to be clear about what they're specifically asking for. Like, oh, how do I start my book? Okay, well, like, what are you interested in? What do you want to write about? What are your ideas? Like, we can't give you specifics if you don't give us specifics. So, hence, just write. <laughs> like, See, you know, that's the type but, of thing, though, like, maybe they don't know that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. when you first started, when I first started writing, I didn't understand that I liked urban fantasy. I didn't even know that was a genre. I was just reading books that had like, you know, I shouldn't say unicorns, they had like trolls and like wolves and stuff in it, you know what I mean? So, and I didn't understand, I didn't understand what that genre was, I didn't understand what it entails, like I was just like, okay, let's just go, let's just do whatever I do, you know what I mean? So sometimes you don't know those questions, and I feel like when they pose those questions, it's like, it's sort of like we have to now become the, now become the teacher and like mm -hmm. pull that pull those things out mm -hmm. and I, so I love those questions that people say well like can can I tell you a little bit about my character and you ask me questions about it of yeah. course I can let's let's do this that's great right so it's just sometimes you don't know and sometimes when they ask those questions like well how do I start writing it's like well this is what works for me or this is what I've heard from my friends stuff like that that's that's how I think about yeah. it and then on the flip side for the just write advice. Now there's that point where people have done the research, have their outlines and everything, you know, got what you need, but you're still looking for something. And it's like, okay, now by this time, you just need to start trying to type out something. Because a lot of times I think <laughs> Scott's writers is that they want to put out a perfect draft on the first go. They don't want to go back and edit. They don't want to go back and rewrite. <laughs> and that's why you're scared to just go and write. You don't want to read the crap that might be your first draft. But it's something you're going to have to do and you're going to have to deal with it. So in that case, you need to just get that pen to paper or put those fingers on that keyboard and get it done. At least the first draft. So that's like my two interpretations of just write, I guess. It's like, give us, give us more information. You know, if you can about, if, you, if you're in the early stages, if you're just starting, and then two, once you've gotten all that stuff together and you're still looking for stuff, like I think by that point, you just need to just start and see where it goes. So what do y'all suggest starting with? Like a scene in their head, like who the character is, like wh where do you go from there? Just randomly put them in a situation. Like it doesn't have to be anything like it doesn't even have to pertain to your genre like I don't know how to start something so I just stick them in the middle of a forest somewhere and just have stuff randomly happen <laughs> like it's not like I'm going to that that may not even make it to the book it's just you're defining your character's personality basically and seeing how they handle situations and you're developing that character at the very least so and while you're writing or free writing you can start getting ideas, things that you probably wouldn't even have thought of if you'd never started writing. So it's just throwing them into a situation, go look up a prompt, put them in that situation, see what happens. If I had to give any advice that wasn't just right, because unfortunately writing is, what is what's going to teach you what the flaw is in your writing. If I had to give anyone any advice that wasn't just right, it would be probably be something just as simple which would be read because you you know what's in you to write the moment you read it like you'll know if you can write because there is that adage that a writer can write anything and that's true but you don't know what you're passionate about writing until you've started reading other genres so you might have thought you were a horror writer but in all actuality you're a romance writer you might have thought that you were a romance writer, but actually you like writing biographies. So actually reading different genres and looking at the different styles of other writers, I think is going to be the second biggest thing that's going to help you as a writer, because then you'll be exposed to a lot of different things. 
So once you get that exposure, you're able to write from a place of, well, this is my genre, this is what I love to do, and this is what I'm feeling the most. So once you get that part figured out, I think the writing part actually becomes a lot easier. You can actually start just writing because you know that this is who you are, this is where you're most comfortable with writing. Like my most comfortable writing horror and dark fiction. Like that's where apparently I hate happy endings. I'm allergic to those. And I'm, I've accepted that about myself. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing that information, I am not, I'm probably not going to be writing any YA novels. So unless, you know, we want our kids to be depressed, then I've got you. I'm like right here for you. <laughs> but I don't do that. So I stick to writing adult horror and dark fiction. Now I could probably do romance and I'm trying it with this one book to see if I like it. But the more I write it, the less romancy it gets. So we're going to see what happens. <laughs> we're going to. It just is what it is. <laughs> <Just> read. <laughs> Figure it out. I think the the just right, I think they mean it in a sincere way. I think they mean it as far as because I've I've definitely said it before. Just right. I think I'm when I say it, I'm saying it as a do it as opposed to thinking about it, right? Because that's what I mean by just right. Why are you thinking about it? Like because, I mean, you won't, like you said, you won't know what you're into or what you're capable of until you actually start putting something down. Like, but that goes back to a point that that you just made as far as figuring out what genre you want to be in. Like, I just, if y'all are, y'all listening out here, I just have to, this is my advice. This is one piece of advice. Just because you are a Black author does not mean you're an, you're an urban author. That, that's just let me just Amen. every artist that we've had on here makes that same point like it's funny <laughs> because i think we we really get okay i'm because i'm black because i'm a black author i'm urban mm, no that's not the case like we don't really we don't know how to migrate through that so but i believe like the the steps that what you should do is figure out a process come up with a process that works for you find out what your learning style is what you know like personality wise like because that tells a lot about who you are as a writer i need somebody to tell me what they need to execute like don't say don't just yeah i'm um thinking about writing a book and leave it at that i need you to say i'm thinking about writing a book i would really like for you to tell me blah because, you know, like, help me help you navigate. But I think a process is really, really important. Understanding that just because you are a Black author does not necessarily mean you have to write urban only. That's not what it means. That is, is don't put yourself in that box because there are spaces that you can go into that I would recommend you going into if you like it, even if you don't know what you're doing. But you've got to figure out what your lane is going to be just do it because thinking about it is getting you nowhere i mean all that thinking you've just done about what you should start mm -hmm. writing you probably literally just started doing it like and invest in yeah. yourself invest in prompt books like there's this one that just came out that i'm like absolutely smitten with i haven't used it yet but just going through it and looking at it i'm like this is good stuff do a writing prompt, like short stories, um, write a story about your day. Like it just has to, you have to do something because you can't just not write. I mean, there's gotta be action. It's an action. Like yeah. it's not a, oh, well, you know, how do I start? You just, you start by writing and it may not even be writing the book. Do the characters, you know, write the outline, write the scene. Like you said, write the scene that you, maybe came to your head or write what dates you want them to go on i mean do something though i think that's what they mean when they say just right do something spend less time thinking about, think about it about that, and more time doing it yeah some people don't think that that's that that's part of writing yeah you know what i mean like they don't understand that 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 it's it's all part of writing, <laughs> writing. the mm -hmm. outline figuring out the characters I, I love I love to Pinterest. I will Pinterest my butt off. My meet some characters in my book. 
So and we have a Pinterest shameless plug, FYI. <laughs> oh, we do. <laughs> TWTF of Pinterest, find us. <laughs> Write that down. <laughs> What was that prompt book you bought? I was like, I was like, is she gonna drop the name of that while she's dropping? I was it? just about to say that too. Right there. 365 <laughs> days of romance. Okay. okay. It's not all romance. It's not all romance because like kind of like breaks them down into like months, right? Ooh. So July, I think, was like horror, thriller. Um let me see. Yeah, Crystal Lake. This is good stuff. Right. Uh-huh. Yeah, July was um, paranormal. Oh, oh man. man, we missed it. <laughs> but I mean, hey, I bought, I didn't buy it at the beginning of the year. It just really came out. So, I mean, honestly, you can just skip around if you want to, but there are prompts in here that are really, really good. And I'm like, if I looked at this month, I was like, if I wrote Dark Romance, like, it's like the first one. Character A stumbles across a book of spells hidden in their late mother's attic as they clear the house to prepare for it for sale. Like, there's just all kind of stuff in here. I'm like, girl, you didn't hook it on up. Like, like, I that. remember I participated in um, in Kinktober, I think last year, trying to figure out how to like write um, like sex scenes. So that's one of my things that I don't like. I don't think I do well. So I was like, I was like, okay, let's participate in King Tower. Let's see, let's get this out the way. And I feel like, I mean, even though my stories were still horrible, um, and then it comes back around to like, you know, feeling like I wasn't good enough because I, but then I had to remember that I was like putting my stuff out there in this group with writers who, this is their genre. Like they write erotic fiction. They write erotica all the time. And I was like, girl, you did your best. Don't even worry about that. <laughs> we and also you give it an honest me. effort. I mean. It got me comfortable with, with with writing it. You know what I mean? Even if it's not the even if it's not something that I'm comfortable with, it got me out of my comfort zone. And it made me it made me want to like keep going. You know what I mean? Like that's um, a good point. I, don't I, write think, all the time, but. I think it's important before people start writing to set intentions, right? Like, what are you looking for? Like, set that intention before you even start writing. What are you looking to get from this? Or what are you hoping to give from writing this, right? Like, set that intention because, like you said, set it anyway. Like, even when you're not writing, just as a whole with doing this work, like, set an intention. And like you said, it wasn't about being the best, it was about putting yourself out there. That was your intention is to just put yourself out there and gain some level of clarity or, you know, um, doing it better as opposed to feeling like you got to get it right every time you come up to bat because it's really not like it's hard. Some of the strongest writers don't always knock it out the park, but if you go up to the bat and you give it an honest effort, that's really all anybody can really ask of you like as as well as asking of yourself like there is no perfect book like and you're not gonna get it right on your rough draft like you said that is like people i was like okay well you know did you read through it like no what <laughs> so you wrote it <laughs> like the end and didn't go back and do anything no i'm just sending it to an editor wrong you know like you're not gonna get it right. You've got to put that like, time into it. Do that. <laughs> Please don't do that to yourself. Don't do and don't editor, think that either. word <laughs> is gonna be. It's gonna like help you out. Word help. Word helps you out like maybe like point one percent. So word don't even know what word want to do half the time. Like, <laughs> yeah. Word don't even know if it want to do editing editing right or if they want to slack off right now. Like literally every time I open it up, I, I can't. I'm like, you didn't fix this yesterday. Like literally, where did all this come from? Like, <laughs> so yeah. you got to spend time on it each time. Like, you know what I mean? Like, don't don't just write it rough draft. <laughs> felt good while I was writing it and then leave it. Like, you gotta go back through it and make sure everything makes sense. Make sure mm-hmm. it's even, like, even something you want to read. Like, 
Yes, that's a big thing. Yes. Are you entertained by this book that Bring you just wrote? Your own stuff. Like, yeah. If you're not, if you're not entertained, bit, like... if you're yeah. bored already, then hey, maybe you need to go and revise, re revise some yeah. stuff. So that bad. Yeah. For real. Like, yes, read through your stuff again. <laughs> a few times. Honest, yeah, honestly, don't do that to your editor. Just because it's their job to edit your book, don't, don't give them your first draft <laughs> and hey, be like, it. like that 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 is a quick way to get somebody to hate you <laughs> real fast <laughs> and I'm just saying this like from my own perspective that should be yeah. like your fourth fifth draft I think that should mm -hmm. go there mm -hmm. and where you feel like okay this is it because you don't want them to go in there because if giving them your first draft is like basically throwing nothing but red ink on your paper and then getting it back <laughs> thinking that you know like you have a band-aid to fix it it's not gonna it's not gonna work you're gonna get your heart broken you know they're gonna get frustrated with you and let's just let's just avoid that kind of thing you know because and my thing is your first is, draft like just getting everything out as quickly as possible like don't, mm -hmm. don't treat it like it's the actual story you're just getting all of your ideas out on paper then there's second what it is you're trying to connect those dots because i assure you you have at least seven plot holes not three seven <laughs> at least seven plot holes in this book what you just said then <laughs> you go in and fix those and like when yeah. she reads it the second time you'll see you're like well maybe this doesn't make as much sense as i thought it was or maybe this scene wasn't the hotness i thought it was when i put it on the paper or maybe he's not as sexy as actually maybe he's kind of creepy like maybe I should do that. <laughs> like those are some things yeah. that you'll catch on the second or third run through. Mm -hmm. Because when you just give them your first draft, now they have to take the time to fix all these little things that should not necessarily be fixed by them that you should have caught as a writer. Not saying that you will catch everything, but I feel like that's so irritating. Like you, if the editor has to go through and fix all your two twos and twos and your there there's and there's I'm and send that stuff back to you. Kitty <laughs> But it's like that is something that you can fix on your own. Find if you don't know the differences between your two twos and twos, your there there's and there's, your your and your and all that jazz, please go learn. Because mm -hmm. that should not be something your editor needs to consistently fix. It's okay if you miss it like here and there, because it happens, stuff happens. But that should not be like a good book of their mm. job. Mm -hmm. Because that's extra they have to do, and then that's longer, that takes longer for you to get yourself back. So, I, that's just, mm. <laughs> <laughs> what's some of the best, what's some of the best writing advice that y'all have received? I haven't gotten any yet. <laughs> Y'all so blank sweet. now. <laughs> no, because you said the best. Like kind of hard to wade through. Um, do you want to go? <laughs> Girl, I'm still trying to figure out the best. Like, Kitty. Hmm. I think if I had to go way through all of the awesome writing advice that I've ever received I think one of the things that made me the most like oh yeah was when I was actually having someone read over um one of my short stories that were, was later published and they told me the when you publish it walk away from it for about like before you publish it walk away for about a week or two maybe oh, that's a good idea. and then like don't even think about it don't touch it don't look at it don't like completely clear your head of whatever it is you thought you wrote that way by the time you come back you'll actually be able to look at it with fresh eyes because you've been looking at it for so long even the mistakes that you like thought you cleared up probably still there because you've been staring at that same sentence for the last six months to a year. And you're just like, oh, then your head is connecting those dots that are not there. So like you think you have that word there, but it's not there. So when you come back, <laughs> you'll start catching things. And you're just like, oh, okay, well, that's, <laughs> I should have saw that. But 
you've been looking, you're, you're so attached to it. You're just like, it's like, like you said earlier, it's your child. So your child can't be wrong. They, they, there's nothing wrong with this one right here. This, this is the A1 perfect child that you have or book. And then you're just like, you go away for a few while, get your little vacation on, get you a margarita. You come back, boy, you was a mess. Just a mess. <laughs> <laughs> Goodness. And so it gives you a chance to like fix it. I would say the best piece of advice I've received as far as writing is how important developing the characters are. Because eventually, because with, with super developed, these are my ace boom coon characters created, they'll write the story for you because mm -hmm. their likes, their dislikes, their wounds, their beliefs, their, you know, all of that, with all of that in mind you are then able to come up with scenarios that fit for your book. So character development is probably one of the best things somebody's ever told me is to spend just as much time as I do on creating an outline for the story, but getting to know my characters, like really getting to know them, figuring out what emotions they have, who they are and how they operate and how they tick. Like that to me is a really, really good piece of advice. So are you a plotter? I am a, okay, wait, you're asking the plotter, the, oh God, I took that Pastor. test, that test. Pastor. I think I, what's the all of them? I don't know the, what the, I think I only ever heard like the plotter and the panther tie, because the panther is the free writer and then the plotter, of course, has to outline everything before they start. That's the Britney's in our group. Well, I guess I'm, I'm the, I have to do everything before I start writing, so. I'm a, I have to, like, I need everything done, like, everything. I'm cancer. I write first, and then I go and outline. Mm. It helps me to see, like, where, where I need this character to be, or why this plot hole is in here, and I thought it was there, but it's not, <laughs> you know what I mean? So it helps me to go back. I like getting that first, like, energy dump out there first and then going back to see and fill in the holes i find that plotting makes me procrastinate like i don't ever get to the actual writing i'm like oh well then this happens and then plus by the time i finish outlining i feel like i've already written the book so there's no point anymore mm. <laughs> like it's like all right well that story is over let's move on <laughs> <laughs> well that was a great outline i'm glad everybody enjoyed it <laughs> Good point, the, only time, the only time I'm like have to have stuff together is like when I'm world building. That's my biggest like I need to know the bulk of how the world works first. And that's only because for this particular thing, all of my stories, whatever I write after I get this world built will be set in this world. Mm -hmm. Period. It doesn't matter how far off it is. I don't care if it's in a totally different genre. It's still going to be in this world. <laughs> so that's why I am kind of obsessed with getting this world building as good as I can, I guess. I know that if I, like on the, I recently did an outline for my, um, for my Bogai novel, <laughs> finally. And like, I was having the worst trouble with it because I just couldn't connect with the character. Like I couldn't connect with the story. Like I like like I like the idea of it, you know? And I remember like this is one of those that it's one of the first stories that I actually like finished. Like I finished book one and two. I have those like sitting there, right? And I still didn't love it. I know that it's horrible. <laughs> so don't look at me like that, you know? <laughs> But it's just like and it took me a while to even to even start and so I thought maybe I had writer's block because I couldn't connect to the story right and I couldn't figure out like why why I wasn't connecting when I could see it so clearly in my head um so I started outlining it again and I think I got a good rap on it but I it so my, I guess my question now is like where does it where do y'all think like it gets to the point where it's no longer writer's block where this story is just like it's it should only be an idea 
you know, like there's no, there's no way to wrap it up into a book. Like how do y'all navigate that or how would you navigate that? For me, if, if I feel like even though the idea isn't strong enough to be a full book, I'm going to probably send it to my mailing list. Like find some way to wrap what I have up or some, you know, fix what I have and send it to my mailing list. Like I, don't trash anything nothing gets uh-uh. trashed for me like uh-uh. if i spend time on it we're gonna figure something out like even like i said if it's just a short story and you know or you know i do it once a week like you know but i think i think with knowing when to just let something be i don't think it should be mm-hmm. let you should leave it forever right i think you should just kind of take a step back and maybe like, cause I have to t- sometimes recognize that what what I'm writing sometimes what gives me the writer's block. If I'm writing something heavy, I, sometimes I hit a rough patch as opposed to if I'm writing something that's a little more funny or if it's a novella that's, you know, just something funny to kind of, you know, buy me some time until I'm done with working on what's heavy. A lot of the times if I'm working on something super heavy or I'm like trying to get a point across or something. I run into writer's block, but I I think that is all in overthinking it. Like, you know, what keeping the outcome in mind as opposed to focusing on the process. Like, like the outcome, I just want to type the end. I want it to be done when I want to publish it. I want to have it done by this. I want to have it ready for this. You know what I mean? Like, I think that takes some out of some of the joy out of writing it. And they're like, you know, your body's like, sis give us a minute wait like, <laughs> like can we can we process what it is you need from us right now like so i think focusing on the outcome is a lot of the times where writer's block comes in and not focusing on the process it's like what's stopping you from saying okay you've got five chapters written what's stopping you from saying okay let me just do a brain up as to what i see happening like and it doesn't have to be a full outline just okay you know what They've de- they know we've introduced them. I know they've met up. Okay, you know they went on a date. Now what? Like, what do you want to see happen? Or start working from the end. Like, and know mm-hmm. your know your genre though. Like for romance, there needs to be a happily ever ever, and there needs to be a black moment. Like, oh, those are facts, right? Like, it doesn't doesn't matter what you call it. Those are facts. So if you know that, focus on that uh, that legitimate fact that there needs to be a black woman, there needs to be a happily ever after. Like, and figure out what you're gonna do and what in between that will fall in line with this. And fall like I don't know. Like I just think if you spend a little bit more time, like kind of thinking about that, and it may be easier for you, and it may not. Everybody's process doesn't work but it's important to figure out what your process is a lot of people don't even know what their process is like so how can you say this doesn't work you don't know like you don't know what your process is because you didn't write yet <laughs> you didn't do it yet <laughs> wow. you just sit there at a blank document like you know so i think it's important to figure out your process like and recognize when you kind of misstepped on that process like me i said i told y'all earlier i'm writing on a book and i didn't outline or do character development before i started and here i am 12k in i'm like sis what are we doing what is going on like so i'm having to reevaluate like (laughs) i reevaluate because maybe i should have done my steps but although i have something now i'll just build on what i have like Mm-hmm. How you process though? And like when an idea and the idea that you have for a story, it may honestly not fit as a book, but it might fit as a poem. It might fit as a screenplay. It might you might be a playwright. Mm-hmm. You don't know. There's other variations of writing out there. Like one book, well, one story that I have an idea for that I try to start writing on as a book it's really not working, but I feel that it will work a whole lot better as a screenplay. So that's what I plan to write it as and see how it comes out. And don't be afraid to venture out into other areas of writing, even though 
you like the idea of becoming an author, you might become a screenwriter. You might, your forte might be in helping produce film, or you might be a writer for video games, or you might be a writer for a theater place, like you don't know, so don't cut off all other avenues, which is one advice I would give to people is like, don't limit yourself to just reading stuff related to novel writing, mm -hmm. even though that's what you want to do, because you can limit yourself like that. Read stuff by screenwriters, because you will learn a lot from screenwriters. I mean, for personally, I did. You can learn stuff from people who are poets. You can learn stuff from people who are playwrights because at the end of the day, we're all storytellers. We just choose yeah. the particular medium that we want to convey our story through. Like you can format, you can learn how to format your stuff to fit a medium. But at the end of the day, I think we all just need to focus on being storytellers, be better storytellers, and then just adopt the medium and roll with it. Mm -hmm. Look at Brittany. Well, yes. yes. <laughs> okay, yes, girl. <laughs> no, because I don't want people to limit themselves. Like, yes, it would be awesome to write a book and see your book on a shelf in the store. It's like, ooh, what a great feeling. But at the same time, if you got this really awesome story and it just does not want to fit as a book, then try other avenues. It's okay. You never know what you might find. Like you could be sitting there, like, hey, yeah, you turn it into a book, but it only made, you only sold a hundred copies, and maybe you made like a hundred dollars. Whereas if you would have taken the time and turned it into a screenplay, shoot, you probably been grossing like a hundred thousand dollars plus. <laughs> like, <you know? laughs> yeah. Like, and now your thing is on the big screen, like for like for jillions of people to see. Like, <laughs> really saying, dream big now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> go big or go home. <laughs> I don't, I don't outline, but I do have a writer's notebook where I put like, if I have an idea or if I, that I try to work things out in, if it doesn't, if it isn't going correctly. Or so if I, if I'm having a problem where like, say I'm writing a story about trolls for some random reason, this troll is not doing what I needed to do. He's not staying underground where he's supposed to, all of these things are happening. I usually like write it out. Like I said, I'm a pantser, so I'll start writing. And then I'll take my notebook and I'll YouTube or Pinterest as much as information as I can find about trolls or whatever else it is. That way it kind of starts shaping what it is I want to do next. Like I'll, I'll usually come up with something once I start immersing myself in the topic of what it is that I'm trying to write about. And then it just kind of goes in there and I'll just take notes in my writer's notebook. Or if I see quotes, I write them. It may turn into a story later. I don't know. We'll see. What do y'all do besides like, like part of your like writing process that you do to kind of alleviate some of that blockage that's happening? You know, like do you paint? Do you garden? Um, walk outside? Like exercise? Whatever you. What What are some of the things that y'all do to kind of help it or research? And I don't mean just sitting on your butt looking, reading books and reading wiki articles. Like for me, for an example, and I love that I actually ventured out to do this because I'm not really the person to like get out. Like it was my goal last year and kind of this year to start doing stuff. But in one of my other stories that I will be working on, you know, there's going to be a whole lot of sword fighting. So instead of reading, just reading about sword fighting, I went and took a class on sword fighting. And that was yes. like the dopest thing ever. You. 10 out of 10 recommend at least once like <laughs> <laughs> so do so that if you can that relates to what your character does in the book because if you can get like firsthand like experience with it it will open up so much because there was there are things that you won't think about naturally it, even if you go and like research and stuff like you being in that moment actually doing stuff and it's like oh okay I need to turn like this oh now I see why they do this like so if you can, go experience something. See if there's like a class or a lecture or something. Get out there and try it. My one. What you're saying is I need to go learn how to skateboard. <laughs> go try it. Go try it. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna bust something. 
I what mean, you go say? We'll get a GoFundMe together to get you a skateboard if we need to. <laughs> we are supportive at the right talk. <laughs> Like, and y'all can record me busting my butt too. I don't mind. Well, I didn't say it was the process, but she tried though. it. But she tried it. But she tried it. If your character flies, go and do um, indoor skydiving so you can see how it feels to have a rush of wind. If you want to be really adventurous, go jump out of a plane by all means. But I haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> so indoor skydiving. At all. <laughs> I mean, just try stuff. I definitely read to get out of that. Um, watch TV. Um, what? I, I I just leave it, and I just don't think about it. Like I'll end up starting something else if it, you know, if it gets that bad. Like I'm just gonna start something else. Like since y'all want because I mean it's not me it's the characters right like it's not my fault it's y'all's fault that y'all ain't got nothing to say like <laughs> I like that I'm just the, you know I'm the mule like bro I'm just here <laughs> if y'all don't bring me any goods I can't do anything so I mean, it's not me it's you so I'm just like okay well I guess y'all don't want the story to be told then I'm gonna go chill like, I just children. literally leave it I'm gonna borrow somebody else. Like, <laughs> somebody else wants some, you know, like I'm just move, I'm gonna move on, like, and then come back to it when I come back to it. I don't, but I do like to read. I will find something to binge watch, like, um, that's really, I mean, that's really it. Like, I do garden, I mean, I have hobbies and stuff, but like, if it's not working out for me, I'm 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 not hard on myself like I used to be anymore. Like, it's just step back because a lot okay. of times that's just it could be your body just saying, "Hey, we need to take you know yeah, right. rest." You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. because eventually, whatever it is that you're doing, if that's just who you are, it's gonna come to you. You know what I mean? Like you said, the going to doing the sword fighting, like. That was just a part of it coming to you. That's still a part of the process, though. Whether your hands to the keyboard or not, that's still a part of the process. You know, um, watching something and thinking, dang, my characters could do that. That's still a part of the process. So I don't know that we ever really give up on it. I think it, we just kind of, we start rearranging a little bit in our head. Like, okay, how can I figure this out? without relying heavily on myself because after you've written so long in so many books sometimes it's hard to feel like you still have that freshness uh -huh. I mean even like I mean I've got several books out and I realize that right now first person isn't working for me because I've already become so many characters in my head like now they're all starting to sound the same so kind of stepping back and seeing it from a, a hovering point it's made a big difference I think also finding your writing ritual will actually probably help you through a lot of things because I don't know if, if a lot of writers notice how if the conditions are right, you can start writing whatever it is you need to write. Like myself, I'm a paper and pen writer and I can write on most of anything, but there are these specific pens from the Dollar Tree. I don't know why they're my magic tool, but whatever it is, I buy packs of those but if I get my little spooly pen and I start writing I'm like oh this is going to be an amazing book look at this Yay! and I'll start writing but I've, I've gotten what I need to do the work that I want to do and it may not be pens and pencils for you you may have a key a specific keyboard that's pink and has like a mouse with a flower on it and you're like this is what I'm going to use or you have to have a specific background or there's music that you have to have playing. Whatever your ritual is, once you start, you'll usually start completing because you'll have that routine, I guess, that you follow. And sometimes, the most of the times, the routine will take you through whatever process it is that your head usually mm -hmm. has to work it out. So make it a habit, basically. Mm. Yeah. And enjoy yeah, I like my music. music. Like, don't <laughs> hurt your hands. Don't sit in chairs that aren't comfortable for you. 
Don't like don't do things that make your make your art harder. Like there's no reason for it. It's supposed to be enjoyable, and people can tell when you write from a place where you're not happy from. And like, what were they going through? Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, <laughs> like that's like you want to go check up on somebody, maybe call somebody and have them go look at somebody. But whatever the case is, just make yourself as comfortable as possible doing what it is you want to do. Yeah, I agree. Don't look at other people's writing routines or their writing spaces and think like, oh, well, hers looks better. No, it's about what's comfortable to you. You know, like my okay. writing space shares shares company with the television for the living room. So like don't even be don't even be mad about it. Just mm-hmm. fix it up how you want to fix it. You know, yeah. like this is one of my favorite places in the house. It used to be my room, but my room is like it's like it's, it's just this open area, right? It's it's big and there's not much in there. Like I like minimal things in my room. So it's not like it's not a very it's not as warm and as welcoming as my living room is, right? Mm. So I want to be in the warmest place in my house to write. Um, so just find that just find that space. And if you don't have a space in your house or, or wherever you are that that feels like that, make it that way. The warm places get that way because it's where we spend our time, where we put our good energy into. So just try and find that space that you want, even if it's in a damn closet. You know, like do what you gotta do. If it's that if you like writing on your balcony, do that. I remember when I when I lived in my old place, I used to love going to go write on my balcony. It just it like it hit the sunset like perfectly. So it it just it just depends on you. Quit looking at everybody. Not quit looking. I'm not gonna tell you that, but just try not to look at what everybody else is doing. And like we've been saying all night, just like figure out what works for you. Because mm-hmm. nine times out of ten, that's going to put you in the best possible positive place. And then, too, finding a community. Finding a community is, like, vital. It's, it's so it, helpful. It, it's helpful. It really it's helpful. is. It's going to get you through those tough times. Because I know, like, we're in a few groups where we're just like, you know what? This isn't working for me. <laughs> or... Like, I need help with this. And, like, people will pounce. And, like, they will really help you and figure it out. So just find those. Even if you're not writing at the moment because you feel like you have some sort of blockage or you having some kind of doubts and things like that, even if you find, like, that village to help you out, even if you just go in there and you comment on others' um, posts or you read what others are writing, um, just making those connections so that when you are ready, you have that confidence and you know that you have that that community behind you. Um, mm. But yeah. Mm. But I also understand when you're looking for a community, it's going to take some work. Sometimes you get the right community for you on the first go. But I understand that is work as well. It There's is. going to be a lot of hits and misses before you finally end up at that community that's like, yes! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so it's still going to take some work. <laughs> so Practice makes perfect work. with everything. Mm. Practice makes perfect. So just don't give up, you know, unless you find out that writing isn't for you. But if you know that this is your passion, just, you know, don't give up. It's, it's like I said, I started writing in 2008. And like the first thing I published was in like 2019. So like, don't give up. Don't give up just because it didn't work out. Figure it out. Every, every I always tell my kids like, because they, because they're children, you know, they get upset when things don't happen the first time around. And I always try to remind them, I'm like, you remember when you first started writing, you didn't write your name that well, right? And we practice on it, right? What did we do? You know, he was like, we did, we kept going, we didn't give up. Well, it's the same thing. It's the same principle throughout your life, no matter what you're doing. It's your determination. It's how bad you want it. It's how far you're willing to go for it. And so this makes part of it. Really quick, let me backtrack to the um, point about the idea when it's just maybe not a book and all that jazz. Please don't throw away ideas. Like money, oh, says, please, please don't, because I made that mistake way back when, because I thought it was a stupid idea. And oh. years later, somebody made it into an animated film. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> Like, so don't, I don't care how dumb it may sound, it may not be the time for it yet, 
but do not discard your ideas. <laughs> yeah. I learned that lesson when I remember when we had the big chunky blackberries. Yeah, I remember that. I remember I wrote like a whole book on that thing. And then something something happened to it and it like it like cleared out all my data. And I was like, okay, okay. I was so devastated. I mean, I was up like all night trying to figure this out, trying to talk to the people on the phone, like nothing could help. And I was just devastated. So now like I feel the importance of like holding on to my babies, to my little poor little ideas, just to keep them close. They're back like saved to everything. <laughs> back up, back up, back up. Mm-hmm. Everything. Have a backup for the backup. Okay. Yes. That oh, happened to me two. twice. <laughs> it happened to me twice. One when floppy disks were still a thing. And I had a ton of those. And that was my fault because I didn't know any better. I didn't know what reformatting your disk meant. <laughs> but it kept telling me that every time I put it in. Oh. <laughs> and little old me is like, well, let's just see what it does. <laughs> let's <it> learn. <laughs> oh, no. Learn. To my laptop just up and quit on me. Like, no warning. It just up and died and took everything with it. <laughs> so it's like... You know what? <laughs> I know, man. So back up your backup. Yeah. Your backup. <laughs> that now that's some advice right there. <laughs> like even when you think it's safe, back it up. <laughs> For real. <laughs> like, nah. <laughs> Don't throw anything away. Like not only just backing it up, but just get out of the mindset of no, then none of it can be fixed like legitimately put it to the side and come back mm-hmm. to it like do not just start erasing stuff like i i i'll be like you did what now <laughs> what yeah. i just deleted it i just scrapped it like why like yeah, like yeah. you hit backspace with it <laughs> and, like, i'm just trying to understand like why you would actually do that like can like, you push the arrow up there to get it back though right <laughs> so you can't go to the recycle bin like you deleted it like, i feel that to your teacher. did you hit backspace with it <laughs> that's too funny but it's true like you can even get you just have a folder in your computer or like a little notebook like I have a notebook full of my ideas that I just write down hopefully there'll be stories one day who knows but it's just like have that space somewhere where you can throw that mess in and be like you know what I may come back to this later on I may not but it's just gonna be there sitting have a graveyard like everybody else just put it in the graveyard yep because there's but one know, I that, I later. that i go back to all the time and i hate i hate the way it's written because i it was a dump it was a it was it's only been like that dumping part like i never went back to fix anything but it's just like i i hate it because i only i only dumped but I love it because it was one of the first stories that I actually had me like writing writing it down everywhere. So like I'm never getting rid of it if I have anything to say about it. <laughs> but one thing that I forgot to mention, uh, I know we're you said we're winding down, but one thing that to try when we're when you do get writer's block is to do dialogue only. Like sometimes I'll do dialogue for three or four pages of just dialogue and the characters actually talking back and forth and then I'll go back in and add the details and figure it out because sometimes talking is a little bit easier than trying to describe the scene you've already kind of done it or you know figuring out how to kind of you know give them internal battles and thoughts like bro do dialogue go back and redo what needs to be added or you know what you don't want but have them talking like dialogue to me it, it comes a lot easier than some of the other stuff like because I'm a, naturally a talker I run my mouth all day so like I can, I can write dialogue all day long mm-hmm. oh there you go again find your strengths mm-hmm. you know find your strengths so my last my last little whoop the whoop for writer's block would be um finding your community and 
even if you even if you're not writing just being in that space with other creatives often helps a lot um and then to invest in invest in like making mood boards or Pinterest boards or so, anything that gets you into the mood of like creating your characters because not all writing is writing. So um, yeah, just figuring that stuff out. Pinterest is one of the best things that could happen to me. Honestly, when I was like, didn't know where I was going because they've seen my Pinterest boards. Like I got some stuff and- Pinterest is dangerous. <laughs> well, you can get in a rabbit hole so quick on Pinterest. Yeah. You really can. You really can. But it gets your juices flowing. You know, sometimes it's my stomach growling. Just to see. Just to see. <laughs> that, that's what I be looking for recipes. <laughs> yeah. For real. <laughs> like, I like looking for people on there. People and. um like settings like the like how their house is look and stuff like that mm -hmm. to me that's so intimate and so i always want to make sure that i get like something like that for them for each character so yeah that's my last little tidbit anybody else want to put a little, little tidbit in there just have to like show yourself <laughs> i love it oh i do actually what is your next book mrs monet what do i need to look for um <sighs> I just released a book on the 11th. So um, I don't know if I'll have, because I told you, I'm kind of like I, trying to work on this, this title of um, a girl. She was kind of the loner, you know, in high school, but now is she's, she's actually not, she's not the loner anymore. Well, she's still kind of a loner, but she used to be picked on. She wasn't the prettiest. She was kind of, you know, just not every uh, she wasn't popular anybody's radar well now she's changed and it's her her high school reunion so i'm trying to work on a love story out of that but again i think i fell in love with the cover more than i did with the idea so i may <laughs> have to you know go back to the drawing board with an idea that i actually i'm in love with it doesn't have a cover <laughs> i think i got like squirrel syndrome Hey, Shani, I just... All right, so time for the, I guess, outro. Monet, do oh, you want to do a shameless right. plug? <laughs> okay, y'all. Well, you know, if you like me, follow me. My IG here is reckless love underscore no chaser. If you want to join my mailing list, follow me at authorcmonet.com. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Twitter. Well, not really Twitter as much. It's not my friend, but... Uh -oh. I'm on Twitter, Reckless Love underscore No Chaser. I'm on Facebook as Author Simone Snow. Um, check out my catalog. Check out my books. I just released a country theme novel called Not Your Forever. So check that out. Um, it's getting really good feedback right now. So I, and again, I appreciate y'all for having me. No, we have. I know this is good. <laughs> yeah, I really enjoyed myself. I did. <laughs> Good. Yeah, definitely enjoying ourselves, honey. Yes. You've been cracking oh, up all night. I know. <laughs> yeah. Well, right, thank okay, you for um, watching the right talk. I hope y'all got some good gems. I hope y'all got some inspiration tonight. Um, I hope y'all are writing I good gems. I'm just like, what? <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't even feel like this show was for them anymore. <laughs> Like I'm glad y'all oh, we have the shows for ourselves, you know what I mean? So we all we all got our favorite topics that's coming up or has come up, you know. So um yeah, even still, many writings, guys. Bye. Yay.